Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines we're tracking for you this evening. The Sensex and the Nifty raise early gains in a volatile session, ending over half a percent lower as subdued global queues hold sway. Mid-cap stocks show some resilience, ending in the green. The rupee weakens sharply as the dollar rally continues. Global crude oil prices see choppy movement as supply disruption worries lock horns with expectations of weakening demand. Oil Minister Hardeep Puri says India will press ahead with its transition from hydrocarbons to green and sustainable energy to mitigate oil shocks. Adds that while the global oil crisis is not over yet, India is equipped to manage for the next few months. Prime Minister Modi will come face to face with China's Xi Jinping for the first time since the border clashes in 2020 at the SCO summit in Uzbekistan. India and China are yet to confirm if there will be a bilateral meeting on the sidelines. Russia's Vladimir Putin will also be in attendance. Life Insurance Corporation is considering setting up its own depository after the insurance regulators mandate that policies be sold in DMAT form starting December this year. A CNBC TV 18 analysis showed depositories like NSDL, CDSL and others could see additional revenues of over 4,000 crore rupees thanks to the insurance regulators move. Auto industry leaders say there was a structural slowdown even before the pandemic but remain upbeat about the future. Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari reiterates that electric vehicles will be the future employers more time to accelerate the switch to greener fuels. Russian missiles target Ukraine President Zelensky's hometown after he visits cities recaptured by Ukrainian forces. President Zelensky was also involved in a car accident, but he is not seriously hurt. A moment of truth for the crypto industry. Ethereum's biggest software update is now live. The move is designed to cut energy consumption by 99%. The founder of Patagonia donates his entire company worth $3 billion to fight climate change. 83-year-old Juan Prunard and his family dedicate all profits to projects that protect biodiversity and call for reimagining capitalism. Also on the show, social media influencers will soon have to live by a new set of rules that mandate stricter disclosures. How will it impact the nascent industry? A special report coming up. Well, let's start with a quick check of the market action. Equity is retreating from early highs to end sharply lower. We saw the Sensex and the Nifty lose over half a percent each as a lack of fresh triggers meant that subdued global queues continued to weigh on sentiment today. The mid-cap index, however, showed some resilience and finally closed in the green higher by about 123 points. Prashant Nair joins us now to wrap up the day's trading action. Prashant, the market's down today. Uh, global worries, of course, uh, seem to be finally catching up. Well, the market finally uh, obeyed what was happening in global markets and we ended slightly lower. I say slightly because through the course of the day, the impulse was very much visible to try and buy the dip and see if it comes right back. And it did on many occasions, but by close, we were down about three quarters of a percent on the Nifty. Market breadth, of course, was negative. Uh, that has been the case for the last many days, even when the market and the index has bounced back. Uh, you know, what, uh, where the pressure came from, it was uh, metals like Hindalco, which lost, and technology, which has been a problem area. Uh, it did not see a bounce even when the market uh, did spectacularly well yesterday in the face of global weakness, uh, and it was down once again. So Infosys, Tech Mahindra are cases in point. Gains came through from old economy names. So NTPC, Adani Ports, uh, Power Grid were some of the areas which did well. Uh, you also had autos as a space, you know, one large area which ended higher. Uh, broader markets, I mean, uh, more declines than advances. PVR was down sharply. Nalco, uh, the aluminum names like Hindalco. GR Infra was lower. Uh, Phoenix Policy Bazaar, Coffee Day, GMDC, uh, LG Equ Equipment. I mean, some of these names have rallied so much. So they, these are just pullbacks and profit taking that we're talking about. One space which really stood out was tires. I mean, C8 was up 20%, limit up. Apollo Tires, MRF, Balkrishna Industries, I mean, that entire space was absolutely on fire. Uh, it, you know, where, where do we go from here? I think uh, the low that uh, the market saw on Wednesday, which is 17,770-odd, uh, is, uh, I think, a line in the sand which has to be defended uh, from a trading perspective for those who are uh, trading. The Nifty's outperformance vis-a-vis -vis global markets, and this is a point we've made repeatedly, is still very, very stark on most time frames. 
The big question is, with global markets continuing to see a little bit of trouble, will it take some sheen off the local markets here as well in the coming days? Will we enter a phase of consolidation after what we've had, which is basically go-go markets for many weeks now? Back to you. Prashant, many thanks for joining us. And in the currency market, the rupee weakening against the dollar as the greenback rallied against its global rivals. Currency markets have been largely worried that the latest economic data from the U.S., that is the inflation print, is an indication that the American central bank will remain aggressive when it comes to rate hikes and tries to quell that stubbornly high inflation print. The rupee closing 26 paise weaker at 79 rupees 69 paise to the dollar. With oil prices staying above the $90 mark, Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister Hardeep Puri says the government is taking all steps to make India energy independent. Speaking at the 25th Energy Technology Meet in Mumbai, the minister said the government is keen to revive the plan to set up a mega refinery on the coast of Maharashtra with a capacity of 60 million tons per annum. Remember, the $50 billion refinery project has been stalled since 2018 due to disputes over land acquisition. Puri said the government missed the bus due to political challenges and now sent out feelers to revive the project. He also confirmed that BBCL's disinvestment is off the table for now, but not ruled out. All that we needed to do was to make the land available. So I tried to talk to talk to the then government. Our companies and there are people who tried to talk to them. time we got message, it will happen, it will happen. Talks not in the sense of formal uh, talks. You know, in all these things that when an opportunity misses you by, which is very regrettable, uh, then you need to try and revive the uh, con context. So we have, we have sent feelers all around. Issue is, you see, even when you say wanted 60 million uh, uh, metric tons per annum, a lot of people said, it's very big. Maybe you can have two into 30 or relocate them in other places if there's a land issue. That's the oil minister. Prime Minister Modi will attend the crucial Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Samarkand in Uzbekistan. The eight-member bloc comprises India, China, Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Pakistan and Uzbekistan. The members are likely to discuss global economic turbulence, the Ukraine war, connectivity, trade and investments. Prime Minister Modi is set to hold bilateral talks with the Russian President Vladimir Putin and Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. However, there is no official word if he will hold separate talks with the Chinese President Xi Jinping and Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif. Abhishek Jha gets us the latest from Samarkand. Prime Minister Modi is arriving in Samarkand to take part in SCO summit meeting. He'll be having meetings uh, with all the member countries uh, at multilateral platforms. Uh, also, Prime Minister is scheduled to have some bilateral engagements where he'll be meeting with the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin. Uh, he'll be also having bilateral meeting with Shokat Mizev, the president of host country Uzbekistan. Uh, also, Prime Minister Modi is uh, scheduled to have a meeting with Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. The discussions during the summit would cover topical, regional and international issues, reform and expansion of SCO, the security situation in the region, uh, our cooperation uh, perspective in the region, including strengthening connectivity, as well as boosting trade and tourism in the region. There are so many bilateral engagements that is also uh, going to be very keenly observed uh, by the experts. Uh, one of them is Russian President Putin and President of China Xi Jinping's bilateral meeting. Both sides have confirmed that their presidents are going to have a bilateral meeting on the sidelines of SEO. However, the agenda of meeting is not very much uh, revealed to the press. This meeting of SEO, which is also happening in the background of Russia-Ukraine conflict, is important uh, when these two, pra these two presidents will be meeting because China has been providing a tacit diplomatic uh, and economic support to Russia while the import of Russian oil and natural gas to China has increased uh, at a very high rate in the last few months. China has also supported Russia at various multilateral platforms, including United Nations, uh, where there were uh, criticism of Russia as to how uh, did it encroach or invade uh, Ukraine. Uh, this, this was the stance uh, opted by the Western blocs led by USA. 
Abhishek Jha, appreciate you joining us there from Samarkand at the SCO Summit. On to CNBC TV 18 exclusive insurance, Behemoth LIC is considering setting up its own depository for insurance dematerialization. And this comes days after IRDI released a mandate for insurance policies to be stored in DMAT form. Yash joins us now with more. Yash, how is this going to benefit LIC? Well, Shireen, so last entire week, we uh, at CNBC TV 18 spoke about what dematerialization is, how it would impact and benefit the depositories. And it's that exact opportunity which LIC has also acknowledged. What we've been given to understand from our sources is that LIC is considering setting up its own depository that would be for the purpose of dematerialization of insurance policies. As far as this particular process is concerned, LIC, uh, we've been told, has already informed a team which is drafting a white paper which will be submitted with the insurance regulator discussions will happen on how LIC can set up its own depository uh, as far as the timeline is concerned the insurance regulator has made it clear that from December of 2022 new policies have to be issued in DMAT form uh, after that uh, in another year that is by December 2023 old policies have to be brought on the DMAT platform so that's the kind of timeline that LIC is also working with trying uh, to establish its own depository before that. But what does it mean for LIC? Uh, LIC has a market share of 75% when it comes to total policies in the industry. LIC issues 2 crore policies in a year and about uh, 22 crore policies are there with LIC which are existent in the market. With all of that, uh, if it goes outside to other depositories to dematerialize, it would be spending anywhere about 1200 to 1400 crore rupees. Now it can actually do that through its own subsidiary in the form of this depository. It can bring down that cost, also get all of that data captive with its own depository. Yash, appreciate you joining us. Those could be the potential benefits for LIC. Ethereum's biggest software update, which cuts the crypto energy consumption by 99%, is now complete. Now, this mega overhaul known as the merge will ensure that Ethereum takes a lot less energy to verify transactions, which has been a cause of concern for the crypto industry. Manisha joins us now to explain how the Ethereum merge is going to work. Manisha. Ethereum, which is the second largest cryptocurrency by market capital, has seen a very big and a very successful merger. An event which was streamed live saw about 15 minutes when the whole merger was completed and at a difficulty level of around 5875 and some 19 zeros after that. It, is, it was so difficult that it is almost seen similar to switching out a running car's engine. That is how the world or the markets are describing this. What we have seen in sense of a merger is that we have moved on from proof of work to proof of stake. Now, proof of work requires powerful computers, a lot of energy, and it has been difficult when you look at the environment part of it. But when you talk about proof of stake now, it has brought the energy demand or requirement down by 99.95%. In this case, transactions are processed when validators take the coins and it is, as I said, environment friendly as well. In case of proof of stake as well, the leading blockchain platform, which has decentralized applications and all apps, NFTs, smart contracts are mostly hosted on Ethereum. Nearly 60 billion worth of economy actually is running onto this right now. The proof of stake also is important in the sense that the new tokens are now being earned by locking ETF. You need at least 32 of them and more activity will mean more rewards, more earning of Ethereum and tokens via that though there has to be a fees that has to be paid for all transactions onto the exchange there. Ethereum also is quite positive on the sense that you are looking at a very strong statement from Bank of America suggesting that this will now drive institutional adoption after the merger. The one thing that is still desired is that there is no cut in transaction fees or the gas fees as we call it. It is still much higher on Ethereum. All right, Manisha, many thanks for decoding what the Ethereum merge means. Now, Road Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari and leaders of the auto industry gathered for the 62nd Siam Annual Convention speaking at the event. Minister Gadkari said he's confident of being able to bring down logistics costs in India to 10%. He urged the auto industry to focus on quality products, asking industry to cooperate in discouraging the sale of petrol and diesel and increase the production of electric vehicles. Because of air pollution, we are making big roads. Your turnover is going to increase. The 10% rise in automobile manufacturing. But at the same time, we will be responsible for creating more pollution in the country. And where we need to find out the solution for that, need to discourage the production and sale of diesel and petrol engines. 
plan. Staying with that, the government will unveil its national logistics policy this weekend. Sources tell CNBC TV 18 the policy will aim at reducing the logistic cost to global benchmark of 8 to 9 percent. 30 digital systems working in logistics across seven ministries will be integrated. 14 states have made a logistics policy. 13 states currently have it in draft stages. Telecom Minister Ashwini Veshnav has asked industry to improve the quality of service. In an interaction with reporters at the national capital, Veshnav indicated that service quality parameters could be made more stringent, possibly to the extent of three, four times. He said that the telecom sector needed to reciprocate the reforms done by the government. See every, each and every village of your jurisdiction and see what is the quality of service. And wherever quality of service is not there, really pull up the telecom service providers. Now that we have given so much in, way, in the way of reforms, the telecom service, uh, service providers should now increase their quality of service significantly. It has to be reciprocal. It has to be tali ekat se nahi right? Tali bajane ke liye dono side, dono hat chahiye. Well, that is the telecom minister. The latest report by Oxfam India highlights that gender-based discrimination is the reason for 98% of the employment gap between males and females. The report highlights that gender discrimination is almost total when it comes to finding regular employment in urban areas. Discrimination is quite low for members of the SCST communities in urban areas, but the figures are much higher in rural India. The founder of Patagonia has donated his entire company worth $3 billion to fight climate change, 83-year-old Juan Chunard and his family have dedicated all profits to projects that protect biodiversity and has called for reimagining capitalism. Well, social media influencers will soon have to live by a new set of rules. Rules that mandate disclosures regarding the products or services that they promote through their platforms. Shilpa Rani Peter finds out what this could mean for an industry that's nascent yet growing rapidly. The next time you watch content from your favorite social media influencer, look out for some additions to the screen in the form of disclaimers. Forgetting so the hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored for paid brand promotions could soon become a costly problem for social media influencers. The government is set to regulate social media influencers, making it mandatory to disclose paid associations with brands. And failure to do so could attract fines ranging between 10 to 50 lakh rupees and repeat offenses could lead to a ban of up to three years. These government regulations come close on the heels of similar guidelines laid down by advertising regulator ASCI and experts say they're long overdue. According to the INCA Influencer Marketing Report, India's influencer marketing industry was valued at 900 crore rupees in 2021 and pegged to grow 25% to 2,200 crore rupees by 2025. That's because 100% of the marketers who participated in the survey said influencers are their number one choice. And in many cases, budgets for influencer marketing has jumped by 25 to 36 percent. This means influencers are now becoming brand ambassadors, making anywhere up to $65,000 a month, depending on follow account. And a bulk of this comes from brand promotions. And the rules are generally being welcomed. 
And back in the day when we want, want to declare it to our audiences that if in, in case it was an advertisement, brands would be very, very hesitant because they would feel that it would lose that organic sense of marketing that is that in the past is what was known as the influencer's magic. And with the guidelines, we now saw that the brands themselves were, um, you know, asking us as influencers to put to, to, to put all the necessary uh, notifications and declarations so that uh, the consumers are protected. And I think in general, this adds in a lot of responsibility to influencers um, and the work that we are doing, which in no way is a negative. Most of the brands have been uh, recognizing the importance uh, of being uh, upfront and uh, truthful uh, with their consumers by uh, specifying that this is a piece of content which has been specifically targeted at a certain audience. Uh, I think it's been taken uh, quite uh, well and in a positive light. So it's actually a win-win that we, we have now tags saying that this is a sponsored content uh, or it's an advertisement. So uh, one, the brand is being very upfront and truthful with the consumers. Second, consumers know that this is a sponsored content and consciously they are trying to engage with this with such content the regulations aren't entirely new but with the industry still at a nascent stage many believe steep fines that could range up to 50 lakh rupees is rather harsh especially on some of the less established influencers 10 lakhs is a very harsh fine to be levied and um, uh, maybe the, the better way to deal with this would be to understand if someone has made a genuine mistake uh, send them out a notice and uh, see if they're being repeat offenders, one. Um, and two, give them maybe a 24-hour um, time period to rectify their uh, mistake and then see if they are still not rectifying it, maybe levy a fine. But many say strict regulations will not get in the way of the industry's growth. I don't think it will be too much of an impact. And do, you, do I feel that it's going to shift spends from... Influencer marketing? No, I don't think so. I think influencer marketing is is here to stay, and it's 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 probably going to get bigger and bigger as we as in as we move on. But some maintain that the rules should go both ways. The industry believes that the owners should also lie equally on brands and agencies, and not just influencers. The hope is that the rules will be clear on every aspect of brand influencer engagement, from defining who exactly an influencer is and what exactly is deemed a paid promotion. In Mumbai, Shilpa Rani Peta. Well, the big change then, the influencer marketing ecosystem. And with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Business 360. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. The news will continue on the other side.